Olá pessoal, tudo bom? Sejam bem-vindos aqui a mais um vídeo. Hoje o vídeo é um pouco diferente aqui no canal. É, esse, essa apresentação eu fiz anteontem, né, dia 5 de abril, e foi parte do, da reunião de grupo aqui do meu grupo de pesquisa aqui no Instituto de Física de São Carlos, que eu faço parte. É, eu estou iniciando o meu, meu doutorado agora. Então, a gente faz essas reuniões onde um membro do grupo apresenta a sua pesquisa para os demais e a gente possa trocar uma ideia, né? é, tirar dúvidas e dar sugestões. Então, toda semana alguém apresenta e essa semana foi a minha vez. Mas a, a diferença dessa apresentação para outras que eu já participei desse tipo é que essa foi a primeira apresentação científica que eu fiz em inglês. Né? Então, a ideia é que eu vá me preparando para fazer apresentações em inglês é, nos congressos, nos cursos, nos eventos que eu vou participar daqui para frente. Ah, já participei de, de eventos internacionais e em algum momento a gente tem que apresentar um pôster, por exemplo, e falando em inglês, mas é, um seminário realmente, é, é, esse foi o primeiro. Né? Então foi uma experiência ainda assim dentro do núcleo né, do grupo para treinar, então... Fazia muito tempo que eu não tinha um contato assim de falar realmente, fazer uma apresentação nesse idioma. Já há muitos anos atrás eu cheguei a estudar inglês, mas nos anos recentes o meu contato tinha sido mais com questão de leitura de artigo, né? Mas conversação mesmo fala, é, tava um pouco destreinado. Aí gaguejei, troquei algumas palavras, cometi uns erros também, esquecia certas coisas. Mas o bom é que no final a mensagem eu consegui passar, o pessoal gostou, entenderam a, a, o conteúdo da apresentação que eu preparei, teve uma sessão bem legal de perguntas e respostas no final, eu resolvi trazer aqui é, a gravação de como é que foi. Eu espero que vocês gostem, né? deem as suas sugestões, comentem aí também o que vocês acham. Hein? E eu vou trazer é, depois esse, essa própria apresentação aqui, essa mesma apresentação, só que em português para colocar aqui no canal também. Beleza? Então vamos para o vídeo, mas antes não esqueça de deixar o seu like e já se inscreva no canal se você não é inscrito, compartilhe aí com seus amigos também e vamos lá. Bom, é... podemos começar? Hoje, hoje temos marcado aí nossa... nosso dia para dedicar ao Xerxo. Xerxo está... É, voltando conosco, ele fez o, o mestrado com o Marcelo, é, eu na parte de minerais, é, principalmente na parte de estruturas cristalinas e petrocopia Hamá. É, ficou ausente é, um tempinho, né, Gesso? Vou virar puro lá, lá, lá na sua cidade e agora voltou aqui é, conosco, parece que a gente não tratou tão mal ele, porque ele votou, né? Ou ele, ou ele é masoquista aí, né? Alguma das duas aí. Né? <risos> então, pessoal, bom dia. Eu me chamo Gerson Anderson. Eu vou falar um pouquinho hoje sobre o meu trabalho. É, bom, mas antes disso, eu é, tenho uma coisa para falar, é que daqui a alguns meses eu estou pretendendo... É, apresentar um trabalho no congresso que vai ter da IUCR, né? a União Internacional de Cristalografia, e provavelmente eu vou ter que fazer uma apresentação em inglês. Então, como eu nunca fiz uma apresentação em inglês num congresso, eu estava conversando com o professor Marcelo e a gente chegou à ideia de que ele fosse uma boa é, fazer uma apresentação no grupo em inglês, né, para treinar. Então, eu vou, eu vou fazer o meu melhor. Eu espero que vocês consigam compreender um pouquinho. Deixa eu compartilhar minha tela aqui. Ok, Gerson, you are welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Gerson. Good morning. So let's start. Eu vou tentar compartilhar aqui, peraí. Tá conseguindo, hein? Ainda nada, chefe. Me avisem quando começar a aparecer. Oi. Agora. Está aparecendo agora. Legal. Ok. 
So let's start. Good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Jason Anderson. I will present today uh, briefly my research developed in my master course from 2017 to 2019 and a little bit about uh, the ideas for my PhD course uh, starting now in 2021 to 2024. But first I, I want to introduce myself. I am now a PhD student at IFISC, but I also work uh, in Amapá State. I have a position as a physics analyst, uh, more commonly known as tech, uh, laboratory technician at Labo uh, Amapá State University. Uh, this institution is where I got my, my degree in chemistry. And uh, since I returned to, to Macapá after the master course, I, I also held a position as a physics professor at Federal University of Amapá. And this another one institution uh, is where I got my physics degree. So I am a, a chemist and also a physicist. Uh, but uh, to start, I invite you to to know a little bit about my 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 place, my my city, where where I was born and where I come from. Uh, here we have a, a a map of Amapá State, and I I I also put a map in of of the Macapá City. So you can see. Uh, Macapá City is the only only cap only Brazilian capital crossed by Equator's line, and here I highlighted the positions of my house and the two institutions that I mentioned that that I work with, uh, where I work, and if you think you if you think you you live far from the work because you have to cross the city to to get there, I tell you that I I literally have to cross the planet from north to south every day to get, to go to work <laughs> the, because one of, one of the institutions are in the north hemisphere and the, the other one are in the south hemisphere uh, these pictures here at the right are some sightseeing points in Macapá the Marco Zero monument is the obelisk situated uh, in the middle of the world exactly above the, the Equator's line. The San Jose Fortress is the most iconic, uh, the most iconic building in Macapá because it's, um, it's a Portuguese, uh, Portuguese construction from the 18th century. And even today is the largest military uh, construction in Latin America. And uh, the, this third picture is Macapá Shore. I think uh, this is the correct word for Orla in English. And is the, is the point where you can, can take a look to the Amazon River, the largest river in the world. You can't see the, another, the other bank of the, uh, of the river, so sometimes you think you are looking at the sea. But, but it's not the sea, it's a river. Uh, here are some interesting things about Amapá for you who, who don't know uh, much about this state. Uh, Maca, uh, Amapá has many boundaries, uh, waterfalls and rivers. Uh, this one here, Curiaú, in the, the, in the upper left, corner uh, is famous because its situation on a former quilombo uh, the african tradition is very strong in amapá as you can see here in the second picture uh, marabaixo it's a it's a traditional dance and music 
original from Amapá, and UNESCO recognized Marabás as an intangible cultural heritage of Brazil. So this is an important important thing. I I I think it's uh, very good to to tell about uh, tell people about these things. Uh, I also put a map of Amapá and the flag. I, I I will go back to the to the last uh, slide. You can you can see the shape of the the fortress, and if you take a look to the flag, the the same shape is represented here. So the the, the fortress is is not only a a building but a virtue of the Amapá. Uh, the people are, are, are very strong. Uh, another another in, in interesting is Amapá. It's uh, the location of the Brazil's Stonehenge. Unfortunately, unfortunately, ours is not as preserved as the English one. But yes, we have a Stonehenge. Uh, this is uh, uh, this archaeological site was discovered just 15 years ago and attract, uh, has attracted many researchers because uh, this can rewrite uh, the history books. Uh, we, we usually think about the, the indigenous people uh, not as advanced, uh, not, not that advanced in astronomy, mathematics and agriculture, but, but now the, the new, new research uh, points that they had uh, advanced knowledge in these areas. Uh, Tukuju people, Tukuju people uh, are the ancient ones who, who occupied Amapá before the Portuguese and even now, people at Amapá call themselves Tukuju. So, uh, for example, I am a Tukuju person. And the best part, the best part is the food, always. Huh? Uh, the, the most iconic food in Amapá is the açaí. And we have, we have a joke with São Paulo people that they don't know the real açaí because açaí here is more like an ice cream, uh, sweet, and they, they have all sorts of stuff like banana, like uh, condensed milk. Cond condensed milk for me is the worst <laughs> because our our acai is is eaten with salted uh, salted uh, uh, food and like shrimp, jerked beef, and fish. And you you also have the flour of mandioca and tapioca. Uh, here are some pictures uh, about my work at Amapá State. Uh, this is my lab where, where the, the students uh, take some experimental disciplines of physics, basic physics 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, in the first picture uh, I show you a workshop on, about the multimeter. Where, uh, because many many of these the, these students uh, will be technicians or engineers in the future, and then they must know how to use a multimeter. The second picture here is a uh, is a visit of the high school high school students to the university, because we we try to to awaken in them an interest to the scientific careers. And uh, another, uh, there are some other pictures about thermodynamics, electricity and acoustic uh, experiments. Uh, uh, we, we are also on YouTube. Last year, by occasion of the Scientific and Technological Week in Brazil, I prepared a short video uh, about the activities in the lab. Yeah, at, at the end of the presentation, I will share with you all the links. Okay, so let's move on. Um, 
we we also we also do research yeah. apart from the the teaching uh, i i i perform some measurements i collect data in in this diffractometer here it's a bench top powder diffractometer of Bruker. Uh, the model is d2 phaser and as i am a technician i usually collect data for other professors and students but i also conduct my own research in two years ago uh three years ago uh me and uh, a student of mine gabriel uh, this 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 guy in the picture here uh, published uh published uh, a book chapter this is the book engineering in the 20th one century and our work were present, uh, was presented in Material Science and Engineering Congress, Foz do Iguaçu. And last year, I also published, I also presented a, a, a research uh, where I analyzed uh, some minerals collected in Santo Antonio Waterfall in Laranjal do Jari. It's a a city at the south south of Amapá, <coughs> and I analyzed them with uh, the diffractometer I, I showed you before. And the main the main minerals I found was diopsid, hematite, and quartz. So, uh, as you can see, we we do research in Amapá and we can do even more, okay? Uh, but uh, since I finished my master course, I returned uh, to Macapá in 2019 and I started as physics profession at Federal University of Amapá. Uh, these two pictures at the left are, uh, are of uh, instrumentation discipline where we constructed some homemade experiment. Uh, this part here is about optics, uh, specifically about Faraday effect on the change of polarization of light. But uh, due to the pandemic, uh, since last year from now, we started to the we started to product classes in the remote format. So I decided to start a YouTube channel and I have many videos. Uh, uh, at the end, I will, I will share with you the link if you, if you have interest. You, you can find some, some classes in, in basic physics one and two. And now I, I will tell you, about, tell you a bit about my master research. I, what I do in my master research is to analyze some minerals, specifically some romate group minerals. Uh, this classification is from the geology and the importance of the romate group is about uh, the applications because they have the antimony SB in their structure and this is a rare metal with many important applications uh, in all kinds of industries like cosmetics and production of metal alloys. Uh, the Romate group is part of the Pyrocross supergroup and the Pyrocross supergroup has the general formula uh, here in the slide A2B2X6Y. This general formula refers to the, these four different crystalline sites. The A and B sites refers to cationic position and X and Y sites refers to anionic position. All the pyrochlor, su pyrochlor supergroup minerals crystallize in cubic system with different space groups. The samples uh, were part of my international scientific collaboration and they were, they, were, they were provided by the collaborator Marco Siriot, one of the greatest 
mineralogists in the world. And here are some photographies and micrographies uh, that I took. And the samples come from Macedonia and Italy. But now at my PhD course, I intend to analyze Brazilian minerals. The first step is to, uh, is to determine the, the chemical composition. <coughs> so, uh, to, to chemical analysis, I performed electron microprobe analysis because this is a powerful technique capable of analyze very small areas of less than one micrometer. And the results are these three formula shown in the table here. Uh, as you can see, they are, they are big, they are very big formulas, but uh, if you pay attention to the, the position highlighted in the colors, it's easy to identify, to identify uh, what mineral species uh, we have. So if if we if we look to the if we look to the first sample highlighted in red at, at the end we have the main uh, the dominant atom in this position is fluor so the name of the mineral starts with the word fluor if we look to the beginning of the formula the dominant element in this, pos in this crystallographic position is calcium. So the name of the, the mineral uh, continues with the word calcium. And as the SB is dominant in the B position, highlighted in green, this is a romate. So the, the, the species, the mineral species is fluor calcium romate. It's very easy. If we, if, if we, if we do it again to the second and third sample, we will observe that in the Y position, in red, we have OH as dominant. And the same for the other positions. So uh, the other two samples are hydroxycalcium romance. But uh, only the, the chemical formula is not enough to characterize, to completely characterize a mineral. So we have to analyze the structure, the, the crystal structure. And then I performed the single crystal X-ray diffraction. Uh, this is the result of the first sample. Uh, the, the, we, we had to do the crystal refinement. Uh, it may be a little confusing at first for those of you who are starting in crystallography, but I call your attention to this information here. Uh, the, the sample has cubic system, space group F3 minus 3M, and it has a, a center of inversion related to this symmetry minus 3m here. This will be important to further discussion on Raman spectroscopy. Okay, so uh, let's keep this information. And I also call your attention to the quality of the refinement. And the quality is, is given by the, by, uh, mainly by the R1, R1, a value here 0 0.016 uh, that is the refinement is less than 2% uh, it's common to to see in the literature refinement with 4 and 5% so ours is very good because it's uh, less than 2% this is a very good refinement another way to see the quality is to, to take a look to the residual values, our, uh, both our residual values is less than one. 
So we have uh, almost no electron density left and the model fits the experimental data very well. This is a picture uh, obtained after the refinement. In the, in the green, we can see the A site, the A crystallographic site occupied mainly by calcium, sodium, and lead. In yellow, we, we can see the Y positions occupied mainly by fluoro. In the red, in the red circles, we can see the X anionic position uh, occupied mainly by oxygen. And the, the blue octahedra represents the antimony coordinated by, by six oxygen, okay? This is a further analysis on the thermal displacement parameters. What does it mean? The thermal displacement parameters are related to the vibrations of the atoms around the equilibrium positions. And uh, as you can see, I, I highlighted one of, the, one of the, the values for antimony. And the values are, are very slow, uh, are very low, okay? Uh, this means uh, that the atom is indeed in that position. Uh, as, uh, once again, uh, we, can, we can confirm the, the quality of the refinement. And I also call your attention to this another value uh, marked here for the oxygen. This is called the positional parameter. I will discuss more about it. Uh, these positional parameters refers to possible distortions of the structure. And in literature, we can find upper and lower limits to this, uh, to this distortion parameter. And for the upper limit, we have the A case. And for the lower limit, we have the B case. As you can see, our experimental data here in the right is close to the lower limit so we have the b case okay this uh, our structure is is the b case finally to validate the refinement we can perform bond valence calculations what is bond, bond valence calculations bond valence calculations it's an idea based on the, the Linus Pauli theory that we, can, we must have a charge balance, a char, charge electronic balance in, in, our, in our formula. <coughs> so if, you, if, it, if we take a look to the general formula, uh, we have the, the following expected valences plus 1.5 for the A position, plus 5 to, for the B position, minus 2 for the X position, and minus 1 for the Y position. Why this values? Because if, you, if we multiply to the indices, we, we, uh, we get the, the charge balance, uh, as you can see here in the, in the right uh, corner, okay? And here in the table, uh, you can see these values marked in different colors that they, they, agree, uh, they agree very well. So the, the refinement was good and, and uh, this validates our result, okay? Uh, we also, we also performed Raman spectroscope analysis. Uh, Raman spectroscopy is a technique where we heat the sample with a laser and we measure the response. And the result is a, a graph called a spectrum of the sample. And th this spectrum is 
a characteristic of the material. So we can we can compare the result with a, a database and uh, the result for the three samples are, are shown here. This is my spectra and the most evident band in the spectra is this one highlighted uh, around around 510 uh, centimeters minus one and this corresponds to the SPO stretching. What does it mean? It means the vibration of the bond between uh, antimony and oxygen. But uh, before I, I, I told you that, that we have a center of inversion in this structure. Well, antimony is located exactly uh, above this, exactly on the this center of inversion. So in the position of the SB, we, we, we can't have uh, active rama. So this band we can see in the spectra correspond mainly, mainly uh, to the oxygen movement around the equilibrium position. Uh, now in my PhD course, I intend to, to perform a theoretical calculation for this Raman spectrum and to, to do all the assignments of the bands in, the, in each one. But uh, the Raman analysis was not only to, to confirm the, the, the Raman 8, and also to determination of water, water presence in the structure. What we do is to is to take a look at the uh, at the range from two thousand to four thousand centimeters minus one. In this range, we can find the OH stretching bands. Uh, this is the vibration of the bond between oxygen and hydrogen. As you can see here, uh, we have these two bands and these two bands correspond to the existence of OH in my structure. But at this point I don't know if this OH is hydroxyl or is the water molecule in the neutral in the neutral in the neutral form. And uh, we have to, to further take a look, we have to take a look also in the range around 1600. And in 1600, we can find this band here in the right, uh, correspond, which corresponds to the HOH banding. Uh, what is this? Is the, uh, uh, it's a, a movement uh, of the water molecule <coughs> uh, similar to a scissor okay no it's not a stretching but it's a bending so the conclusion is we 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 do have uh, water in our structure and it may be in both forms of neutral molecule and OH structural water Uh, the, the, the same analysis was done for all the samples, but to, for, for, uh, not take so long, I, I just showed you one of them. And in my PhD research, the objective, the main purpose of the research is to completely characterize Brazilian minerals from various occurrences. Uh, why this? It's because Brazilian minerals are still unknown. There are some description of Brazilian minerals, but uh, just a few have been completely char characterized. So uh, there are great possibility of new minerals to be discovered. And the samples may be obtained by collaborators. And the second objective of my research is to resolve some problems found during master research. Uh, one of these problems 
is the determination of the correct valence of the SB in the structure. Uh, here in the right, I show you that uh, both SB3 plus and SB5 plus can occupy the B side, but uh, this is an open problem in, in mineralogy. Uh, no one has uh, solved uh, correctly this pr uh, the presence of uh, one of these valences the predo the predomination uh, predominance of one of these valences so my my idea together with uh, dr marcelo is to use uh, the extended x-ray absorption fine structure known as eschafs in synchrotron and what is, what is this technique? This technique uh, consists in uh, heat the sample with X-ray and part of this X-ray radiation will be absorbed by the, by the sample. Uh, here in the, in, the, in the graph we can see an edge. This edge corresponds to the maximum absorption and when the atom are heated by uh, are heat by x-ray radiation it emits spherical waves and these spherical waves hit the next atom in the lattice and the radiation is backscattered so uh, what we measure what we measure is the the interference which can be constructed or the structure and that's why we can see this this oscillating pattern here uh, the idea is that uh, with this measurement we can we can determine the the correct atom the correct valence and the correct bond lengths in the structure so we can undoubtedly determine uh, which one of these valences is present in my mineral okay uh, i was i was doing this this slide to put you the links but i will i will share with you the links uh, now and from this point on i will stop trying to to talk in english and <laughs> if you have some questions i will answer them in portuguese Thank you very much. É isso, pessoal. Obrigado. Yes, pessoal. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Very nice. Muito bom, Chester. Muito bom. Gostei muito daí. Então, galera, foi essa apresentação. É, como vocês viram aí, eu dei uma erradinha na data lá. Eu coloquei 5 de maio, né? mas na verdade era 5 de abril. É, outra coisa, os links também que eu falei que eu ia colocar na apresentação aí no slide não apareceram, mas eu vou colocar aqui na descrição do vídeo, vocês podem acessar os links por aqui, tá? E fica à vontade também para colocar aí nos comentários o que, que vocês acharam e tal. E fiquem no aguardo aí que eu vou fazer também essa mesma apresentação, só que em português, explicando é, quem ficou curioso talvez aí com a questão do, da linha de pesquisa, saber o que, que a gente faz, o que, que a gente pesquisa aqui no Instituto de Física com os minerais. Né, eu vou explicar mais um pouco também. Então é isso, galera. Espero que vocês tenham gostado. Aí. Foi meio estranho verificar essa apresentação em inglês né, com alguns, algumas falhas, mas é isso aí. A gente vai aperfeiçoando com o tempo. Muito obrigado. Se você não deu o like no início do vídeo, coloque o like aqui agora já. Valeu!